Good. All right. Vinny, you start. <laughs> you talked the last time we talked about your uh, just starting to dig into this team. How much of your evaluation of what these teams look like? I think the one thing that jumped off, um, kind of doing a deeper dive, is how tough a football team it was. Um, and I would say that on offense, defense, and the, and the kicking game. Um, but tough, resilient, and, and really committed to the process. Just watching the whole situation, how the season played out from how it started, and then your head coach is no longer there, and then how you finished it with the new head coach. Um, but a really tough-minded, mentally tough football team. So that's, that's what kind of came out the most. Um, and you're talking about both sides of the ball, like offensively, like we have a lot of work to do. I think that's pretty easy to see. I kind of liked even watching how Aiden, Aiden O'Connell kind of handled the situation. You're talking about a guy, a rookie, first of all, coming and playing. Um, by the time he starts playing a lot, he no longer has his head coach, who is also the offensive coordinator. So it's a new offensive staff, essentially, he's kind of working with. And then we had some injuries late in the year with the left tackle and even Josh Jacobs being out, seeing how well he played late in the year. Um, but we've got a lot of work to do on offense there. And then defensively, I think a lot of it's probably from the continuity of the, playing the whole year, how well it played. And uh, what a great job Patrick Graham did with the group um, on a day-to-day -day basis, but then how they played on the field on Sundays and the mentality that they played with, which is a lot of what you see on defense um, and the special teams. And we have some pretty elite um, guys in that as far as long snapper, punter, and kicker, um, which is, believe me, it's great to have. So... Um, but, you know, we've got work to do in all three, but I like what I saw, like, for the toughness of the football team that's there. Tom, for you, you come to the combine. What's most valuable uh, to you? Is it the interviews? Is it the, the getting the actual real numbers on the guy's size, height, speed? What, what stands out to you? Uh, a couple things. Uh, one, for me, I love being around our guys at the combine. We're talking about our guys, like, our personnel staff, um, especially right now to get to know them better. Uh, so I spent a lot of time just talking football with, all the scouts, all the personnel people, I love that part of it because we're with each other all day long. I mean, I've been in some different committee meetings the last couple days, but starting tomorrow, be with our guys every day. So that's a big part of it. Um, next part of that, I'm not a part of, but the, the, the medical process is huge. We, we, we really need that. I'm not part of that at all, but that's the most important uh, part of the combine. And then all the measurable data that we receive, you know, that's very important to me to have. Uh, do I necessarily have to watch it all the time? Not necessarily. You know, I don't, I don't need to see somebody get weighed in and see how tall they are. I don't need to see them do a broad jump. Uh, but that, that, that data to us is very important as we make decisions. So those are probably the most important things. The interviews are nice. Um, but in the end, you know, in a 15 or 20 minute interview, there's not a whole lot of new ground that's broken. Um, our scouts have already done so much background work on the players. Um, so we already have that information. You get a little feel for their personality. Um, but in the end, you need to spend more time with the kids than just 15, 20 minutes. So the interview is nice, but it's not a, it's not, not a huge part of it for me. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the back end of that. From what I've seen, he's a very good player. Um, he has size, he has speed, he has some nice vision, has some production late in the year. Um, but... The way we're going to play and the way a lot of teams play is you need more than one back. And I don't really see a lead back type thing. you got to have more than one. You need to have two. You need to have three. Um, they all have different roles with the team. Uh, the way this game is played, it's, it's hard to do uh, just to put that all on one person. Well, I mean, you'd always want toughness, um, you know, but that's a good question as far as, you know, there's not always a lot of carryover from one year to the next. We think there is if there's not, but there's certain things that are, are and the culture you've built is part of that, and that toughness is part of that, which Antonio has already kind of instilled in the football team. So that we can really build on moving forward. Oh, we got, I've got everybody here today. Look at this. Um, but, yeah, that's something we can build on, but, you know, that's something we're, we're looking for anyway. Like this, this is a tough league. You've got to have that, that element no matter what. <laughs> hey, with like any position, as you age, you sometimes you get a little bit better at it, right? You know, your, your technique gets better. A lot of times college players um, at every position, sometimes you're so much more talented than the player you're going to play against, you, your athletic ability can just kind of take over. Because um, at the college level, you're not always playing against another pro prospect. 
And then you get in this league and your ability can only take you so far. A lot of it's fundamentals and technique to try and raise that game. So um, it's not always a bad thing getting older. Uh, now with every position, you gotta try to see where the decline starts. Um, but the receiver position, you know, you can still have some success in this league just on route running, adjustment hands, and maybe not quite as fast as you were, you know, when you're, you know, 19, 20, 21 years old, but still be very, very productive. What are the characteristics you're looking for in a quarterback? How many do I get? <laughs> There's a lot of different nah. to choose from. Yeah. Uh, the, the two for me are probably leadership and toughness. I think you have to start with that. Um, he's got to be somebody that when you're in the huddle and those, ten other pe those players are looking you in the eyes, that, that you can lead that group, and you got to have that. Um, so those are two most important things for me. And then it kind of goes into, you know, preparation skills for that position is like none other. Probably like no other sport in professional sports. So talking about leadership, toughness, preparation skills. And then we get to the physical abilities. Then you start having sliding scales for different things because there's, there's just there's no perfect players. You have to realize that. Um, but uh, I always start with leadership and toughness work my way from there. Causing concerns when you're evaluating a quarterback? Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's probably like I was just saying before, you know, preparation skills in this league are so important. Everybody is so talented in the NFL. you got to find your edges. And at that position, the work you do Monday through Saturday is just as important as Sunday. So if you had a prospect at that position that really didn't like the process, maybe didn't love the game of football, didn't like preparing, just want to go out and just kind of wing it, that would be a big concern for me. Yeah, it's probably less now. Um, there are just so many transfers right now. Um, you just have to deal with it. If this was 15, 20 years ago, Sometimes a little bit, little bit more of a red flag. It really isn't anymore. So um, it does take us a little bit more time as we do our background and research because you got to go to multiple schools, talk to multiple scouts. So it takes a little extra time to put it together. But I don't see that as a red flag for, for kids transferring. What was that beginning? Oh. Yeah, I, since we're in uh, late February, I really wouldn't take anything off the table as far as going up back. Yeah, so. Yeah, so the first question is, do you have a, you know, uh, what was the timeline in, in, to answer the death of the It was pretty, pretty late in the process, I think, when we brought him in. I think he just kind of, I just met him, uh, I think, last week for the first time. So, um, you know, I think, I think Antonio was looking for, Someone like a, like a playing background, not necessarily a pro player, but the fact that he's a pro player I think helps in that room. Um, he's got some great experience at Auburn, both as a position coach and as a head coach. That's always nice to have. So I haven't got a chance to really get to know him yet, but I love his background. I like what his resume looks like. You see, I guess the one thing I'll say is this is like, there's really no consensus boards, at least since I've been in the league, there isn't. Um, you got 32 different teams that look at things 32 different ways. So our ranking may be different than other rankings. I don't know if there's necessarily a top three and an X2 or an X3. Um, I'm not going to go down my list with you now, but I don't even really have a list at this point right now. So um, we'll work through it like we do all the other positions. Um, but like, if there's one thing, you can, like, there's just not a consensus of like what the ranking is. It could be a little bit different for everybody depending on what you're looking for. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm not really one that needs to sit down and go eye to eye and then walk away in 15 minutes and say, I know if you can play or not. I'm not that good. But what I really get from right now is talking with all of our scouts that have really spent a lot of time watching these players. And then as we move into the next month, talking to our coaches as they evaluate these players. And then I'll have my own opinions as well. We'll kind of take all the information in and then you know try and make a decision on whatever position it is. You know what, there's just all different personalities, so it's not like we're looking for one personality. There are all different personalities for different positions. I, I certainly would never grade someone's personality. Um, I just want to know, are they committed to football, do they love to play, do they want to get better? Um, 
and look, we're, you know, we can all give those answers, but a lot of it is we need to see examples of that. And a lot of those examples happen in the last three or four years with these players, whether from, from the recruiting into college all the way through college, we try and get some information that way as far as experiences more so than somebody just going to tell me what, what I want to hear. Uh, he's a Raider. Yep. Yeah, I mean, as a GM, we never want to take anything off the table, but I don't anticipate using that tag this year. How important does it bring him back since you did mention to have a running back by committee and what he means to the team? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a high-level player. Um, and I do want to establish a philosophy with the Raiders that we like to resign our own. Um, doesn't bother me that I didn't draft him. Uh, he's a Raider, and he was drafted by the Raiders, so he's a high-level player. So, um, yeah, we're going to explore pretty hard to see if we can bring him back here and kind of go from there. But he's, uh, as far as a player that, you know, running game, pass game, pass protection, um, you know, can really help you win games. Yeah, I've worked with JoJo for a long time, um, my whole tenure with the Chargers. Uh, I always thought he came up the right way. He was with the Jets for a long time, came up in that Parcells uh, philosophy, he knows football really well. He's just really well experienced both in college and pro scouting. Uh, he's really experienced on how the, my style of working, and uh, he has a great reputation in the league. So even when he came in our building, he knew a lot of the, the Raider staffers already. They know him well. Uh, so the transition's been really smooth, and it's just adding another person that, that really knows the game well, has great people skills, can really work with coaches well. Um, it's comforting on our staff between JoJo and Dwayne Joseph and Champ Kelly. We, we have people that could be GMs somewhere and, and most likely will be GMs at some point. So, you know, I need that help around me. I need those ideas uh, from people like that. And we have a younger crew of people coming up that may fit that criteria as well. How important was it to hold on to Champ Kelly to be able to help you get familiar with the current roster? Yeah, I think his institutional knowledge is really important. But, you know, aside from that, he's really good at what he does. Um, and there's a lot of good people in the building right now, so that was, you know, it's always good to have. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been so much different. Um, I guess it's probably different by position. Um, like the quarterback position, I don't think it's a bad thing if you come out a little bit older. It may be even a better thing. You've got more experience on your belt, uh, more maturity at that position. Um, other positions, it may or might not matter. I don't. It's just something we have to deal with. Um, but uh, I think after we get through this COVID group of kids that come through, we'll probably really come back to normal a little bit as far as the normal ages of kids coming out. You know, typically as a scouting staff, we always say we like a younger player because the guy has a chance to develop, maybe has a little bit more ceiling. Is that true or not? I'm not really sure. But I do know that we're going to have some players coming in the league that have good experience and maybe ready to play a little bit earlier than maybe in, in times past. How much impact does Mr. Davis have in terms of, you know, just players, you know, wanting to know what you guys are doing and stay abreast of Yeah, I mean, he's, he's been in the league a long time. He knows football very well. Um, he's the owner of the team. Um, but he's got, it's great, it's actually good conversations, great feedback. It's a great person to bounce ideas off of. Um, but yeah, he's, he's got he's got a very big big uh, you know his, his say of kind of what you know what I'm doing and what Antonio is doing, and uh, it's, you know it's a pretty good process so far. I guess we're gonna find out because I haven't turned a card in yet. No, I'm I'm pretty sure like you know he hired me to do a job, um, but part of my job is explaining hey this is what we're doing this was a thought process behind it. Usually those discussions happen way before. You know, I don't think of anything like when the, when the clock's ticking down behind me and I'm holding a card in my hand and, and, and someone says, hey, I don't want to do that. I got a bigger problem going on. So, uh, no, it'll be a pretty smooth process. You know, I, I'll say this, and, and the way we've always scouted, um, we scout every position like our roster is empty. So just because at the last team we had a quarterback doesn't mean I didn't look at quarterbacks. I mean, we look at everything. You, you never know what's going to happen in this league. So, um, yeah, so I've, I've seen most of them. Um, it's a pretty deep class. The last five or six years, as, you know, especially skill positions as far as receivers and quarterbacks, they've been very deep classes, and they've been coming in the league and contributing earlier than they used to. Um, 
I think a lot of that has to do with high school football and summer seven on seven. The fact that teams throw the ball so much more in high school than they used to, as well as in college. So we're getting players coming to this level, quarterbacks, receivers that are really pretty skilled. Um, so I think that's a positive, but I think this year's class is, is relatively deep. I think next year's class is not is, uh, is really early on, but there's, there could be some depth there as well. Now, that's, that's a pretty in-depth question. Um, certainly, we love players that are coached well, um, and there's a lot of programs like that. And even starting from high school to college and college to pro, um, you know, their base may be a little bit higher. But uh, I think just because you're coached well, really well in college doesn't mean that you're tapped out and you get to, to this level and you won't be able to uh, have any more gains. So, um, yeah, look, there's some great coaches around there. Georgia has a tremendous program. You know, you're getting pro-ready players, along with some other programs as well. Um, but that doesn't necessarily put a ceiling on them at our level. Yeah, it's been really cool. And it was, you know, it was nice having the, the Super Bowl in town, so I got a chance to spend a little bit more time with them. Um, what I thought was really, really neat with him was watching him go through the process of hiring the assistant coaches, because I've been through that process before, and sometimes it gets a little bit hectic. Sometimes um, you do some moves a little bit too quickly where you might hire a good coach, but maybe it doesn't necessarily fit maybe the vision or philosophy you're looking for. And he really took his time. He talked to a lot of people, um, did a lot of research, took in a lot of opinions, and uh, you know, put a staff together and took his time doing it. I mean, really, we didn't fill the staff until probably last week. I think we probably filled it right there. Um, but to see him work through that process, I'm like, you know, you can say he's a first-time head coach, but, man, he handled that like a pro to me. So I thought that was just a great sign to see. All right. Oh, I thought I was done. Yeah, market, I don't know, but I do know there's just a, there's a lot of backs that are available this year. Um, so I guess it remains to be seen, you know, what, what other people think. But uh, the talent pool at that position for agency is, you know, relatively high. All right, thank you.